today we got the Vandy Vape Jack Garou up for review. The big question is though, is this a Geek Vape Aegis killer? Make sure you watch the whole review to find out exactly what I think. Let's go over this mod now. Let's check it out. All right. Quick tour around it. Look at those those gorgeous G10 panels. They are absolutely stunning. They really are. Really nice job on that Vandy Vape, okay? Here is your screen. Plus and minus button clearly identified. Nice fire button. Look at that raise on that fire button, man. I mean, you can just feel it when you rub your thumb across it. Nice job on that as well. Now, you have a gold-plated 510 here that I would say has a stiff spring with a short throw to it. Stainless steel threading around that, okay? Nice cuts over here. Look at those deep grooves. When you put this in your hand, man, it just feels fantastic. Really solid job on the build quality on this. I mean, Vandy Vape, it's, it's impressive. It really is. Beautiful color screen. You can see you have your voltage over here, your resistance here, your mode there. There is your wattage right there, 50 watts. There's your puff counter. Here is your puff counter in seconds. That is your battery meter in percentage, your battery meter right there, and locked or unlocked. The camera isn't really doing this screen justice. It's, it's just beautiful, man. I'm going to try and angle it so you can see all the different colors. They just did a nice job on the screen. I mean, really, really beautiful. It's bright. It's vivid. Just a great job. Now, the first mod I could think to compare it to is the OG Aegis. I mean, very, very similar the Aegis is a little bit more bubblier. This one's a little slimmer, right? But very, very similar as far as form factor goes. The Jackaroo is definitely more comfortable to hold, and it's got a nicer rubber feel to it. This rubber is more like a hard rubber. This is a little softer. It's got a little bit more give to it. I like, I like them both, man. But, you know, I love the Jackaroo. The Jackaroo is definitely a better better device but let's be fair this one's over a year old already okay on the bottom you can see very very similar i have the 21700 battery cap here okay the the og one has a kind of a tab like that that you lift up but same type of battery compartment just really really i'll tell you if you liked this mod you're gonna love this mod that's the way i'll put it okay also wanted to show it next to the legend all right this is a dual battery mod that's also, you know, pretty bulletproof as far as waterproofing and stuff goes, all right? You can see, you know, it's it's not much smaller, not much smaller than the actual Legend, all right? Same type of width and everything, all right? Same type of height, okay? The height is very, almost exact, okay? But I got to tell you what, man, this one definitely feels better in the hand than this one. And I love this mod. I use this mod a lot. This thing's beat up. But, man, look at it. You know, it's in that same genre. It really is. Vandy Vape did a nice job for their first, you know, or maybe this is their second attempt, actually, at a bulletproof mod. This is their first attempt at an external battery mod that's bulletproof. But let me tell you something, man. Great job by Vandy Vape, really. Let's see how bulletproof it actually is. As you can see, I got a bowl of water here. You can see it's on. Let's give it a little dunk. All right. Leave it in there for a couple of seconds. Okay. I don't see any bubbling coming out of it, so that's good. That means no water's getting in. All right. And let's see if this thing is still on. Look at it. Check it out, man. As far as I'm concerned, that passes with flying colors. So yeah, man, nice job on the water test. Do it again. Drop it in there. Check it out. The water just beads off that beautifully. Nice job on that, Vandy Vape. I guess we can say this is waterproof. All right, now this is firmware upgradable. The micro USB port is behind this plate. From what Vandy Vape is telling me, they're going to include a tool in the retail packaging where you can remove this plate right here and access the micro USB port in order to update it. So I just want you to be aware of that. I did not get that tool in the sample packaging that I got, but I want you to know that it is firmware upgradable. 
Now, as far as venting goes, the venting is very much set up like the old Aegis. The venting is on the top here. There is a plastic plug in the unfortunate event of a uh, battery venting. I'm assuming that plug under here will break and the battery will vent out of the top. So I want you to be aware of that as well. The only difference between this type of system and the one on the OG Aegis is the OG Aegis had the plug, they had their USB port up here with a plug, and that's where the battery would have vented through. There's no USB port here. The USB port is on the front of the mod under the plate, so just be aware of that. On the bottom side of the mod, again, because of the IP67 rating on this, they had to put this old school type of battery cap on it. They did it much like the OG Aegis, right? You got that little flip up tab right there and you just give it a twist, right? Just like that. Threading's really, really smooth, man. They did a good job on the threading. See how white that is? That's because this is silver plated. Nice battery indicator marking. You know, it's, it's pretty clear, all right? And the threading around here, see that? That's also silver plated. So nice job on that. Real, real nice job. On the bottom of the tray, we have a spring-loaded battery contact that you probably can't see, but trust me, it is spring-loaded. Also, inside the packaging and inside the mod, you'll get a 18650 battery adapter. Now you hit the button three times, and you can see now I can scroll through power mode, stainless steel, nickel, titanium, and back to power mode. If I want to go into stainless steel, I hit the fire button. So now if I want to change the modage and temperature control mode, you can see right there my wattage in the corner is blinking. I'm at 59 watts. Now I'm at 60. Okay, I can scroll up or down right there until I find a temperature that I want. Then I just hit the fire button to confirm. Okay, now if I press the plus and minus button, I go into the secondary menu. This is where I can turn on and off the different features. This is your voltage mode, this is your TC mode, bypass, color, auto resistance, that's your fire button, okay, where you can figure out if you want to lock the mod or lock the whole mod down, all right, let me show you what I'm talking about, see voltage right here, if I hit minus I can shut it off so voltage won't show up in the menu, same thing with TC, same thing with bypass is off, here's where I can change the color of my screen, green, blue, red, purple. I keep it on the amber one because that's kind of got the most colors. I like that one. I like this auto resistance thing, this feature, so I like that. Here is your fire button. If you turn it off, when you lock the mod, you will not lock the fire button. If you turn it on, when you lock the mod, you will lock the fire button. This is your factory restore. If you go into this menu system, it will reset you back to factory settings. Hold the fire button to go back to your regular menu system. Let's put it back in power mode. Right there. Okay. Now if we hit the plus and minus button again, this is your DIY mode. These are custom presets you can set. You can set them in any mode you want to that you have turned on. Stainless steel, titanium, you know, nickel, whatever you want. P press the plus and minus button again. Here you can adjust your brightness of the screen. Press the plus and minus button again. Over here. Tells you how many minutes you can program it before it goes to sleep. I normally keep it at 20. Over here is your puff reset. Over here is your version. Over here is your chip ID number. And here is your back button back to the main screen. Okay, so very simple menu system, something we've seen before. It's the same thing as the Vandy Vape chip that we've seen in the Pulse X and the Pulse 80 watt, okay, the regulated one, just has a different skin. Let's go over the tank, check it out. You can see on the bottom it is serialized, okay. We have a gold-plated 510 insulator ring around it, stainless steel threading around that on the bottom. We have some bottom airflow right here, a little bit of a texture so you can get a grip. Whatever you adjust on one side, of course, happens on the other side. Here is the bubble glass. Nice drip tip. 
a little bit of like a heat sink action going on here, right? You see that little space right there? That's kind of neat, man. I like that. I like that little heat sink action going on. Here's the bubble glass, like I said. In order to get the top cap off, check this out, man. Like a half a twist. Bang. It's open. You got one fill port right over here. Needle nose bottles only apply. Bull nose bottles are going to be a little bit messy. You might be able to get it in there. Thank God it's a little recessed over there. So if you do have a bottle with a wide tip, you know, you might be able to, you know, guide that juice into the fill port hole right there if you spill any. But, you know... I wish it was a little wider. I really do. Put the cap back on. Half a twist. All right. As you can see, with the bubble glass, we have a 5 ml capacity. With the straight glass, we do have a 3.5 ml capacity. Nice drip tip. Check that out, man. I mean, it matches beautifully to the mod. When it comes out, right, the first time I saw it, I was like, where are the O-rings, man? This is a 510 drip tip, but the O-ring is actually on the inside of the top cap here. So I was a little taken aback, right? And I said to myself, at first I thought it was a proprietary drip tip, but then I took one of my traditional 510s, and with a little bit of effort, it does get in there, and it fits nice and snug, no problems at all. So I just wanted to show you that your 510 drip tips will be compatible to this. They just take a little bit more effort because of the O-ring inside in order to get them in. But this one is very comfortable, and I love the looks of it. Let's open this thing up. Let's check out the coil that's in there. You can see I've been vaping on the mesh one. This is the 0.3 ohm coil right there. Good for 40 to 60 watts. Very, very beat up, man. I've been running a lot of custards in it. Probably got about, I don't know, a dozen or so tankfuls in here. And the flavor's still not bad, but it's beat up. It's time to change the coil. So let's put the new coil in. Let's put the 0.15 ohm coil in. Hopefully this one's going to be more up my alley because it's a little bit of a higher wattage. Okay, there it is. You can see mesh, 0.15 ohms, good for 50 to 90 watts, which is more my style. Also included in the packaging is a spare straight glass. You get a micro USB cable. For updates and you also get a package of spare o-rings as far as paperwork goes you get a warranty card you get a proper use card that shows some battery safety and some atomizer safety and you also get a jackaroo kit user manual let me give you one look at it all put together check it out check out how beautifully that drip tip matches the g10 Really, really nice job on that. All right, insiders, let's get into them cons and pros. First con's going to be, not a big fan of that 0.3 ohm coil. I don't like the wattage that it vaped at. I don't like the vape I got off of it. It was kind of cool. Kind of reminded me of that Geek Vape Cerebus tank, that mesh coil, right, that only goes up to 60 watts. I just didn't get a very satisfying vape. And I saw that the flavor started to wane after about five or six tankfuls. So I'm not a fan of that 0.3 ohm coil. The coil that I did like is the 0.15 ohm coil. The problem is, with that coil, you're just going to rip through the juice. Straight glass spare to me is absolutely useless, especially with a mesh coil. You guys know how, how I feel about that. I'd rather get a bubble glass spare. I'm giving them a con for that. Old school battery cap, man. I understand it. This thing's waterproof. That's why they had to use it. But I wish they would have come up with something a little different. Some people aren't going to like that old school battery cap. Sitting there twisting and twisting and twisting so you can install a new battery. So I got to point that out. It's heavy, man. For a single battery mod, this one's on the hefty side. Let's move on to the pros because there's a ton of pros on this mod. First pro is going to be... Look at it, man. It's gorgeous. That G10 is phenomenal. I love it. Probably going to pick myself up the green one as well. It's got a comfortable form factor. And I'll tell you what, man. It's got some nice texture to it, which gives it some great grip. That's a big pro in my book. It's bulletproof. It's waterproof. It's dustproof. It's shockproof. It's IP67 rated. That's a pro. That raised fire button is awesome. All the buttons are clicky. I'm giving them a pro. I love that G10 paneling that they did. And it's replaceable. You can rock different G10 panels 
in the aftermarket. That's a pro as well. It's got that Vandy Vape chipset. Yeah, it's got a different skin on it, but it's still the same chipset, and it does decent TC. That screen is just drop dead gorgeous. They did a great job on it. I'm giving them a pro for that as well. I love the way they laid it out. It's a no-nonsense screen. This mod fires down to 0.05 ohms. That's a pro. 26 millimeters will fit on the Jackaroo without any overhang. 28s will look okay, but they will have some slight overhang. The tank has really nice flavor and clouds. Then again, what do you expect from a mesh coil? I got the 0.15 in here right now at 80 watts. Check it out. Very nice, very saturated flavor. I got the heat that I like off of it. That's why I like the 0.15 coil better. And the flavor is just fantastic, man. The clouds are good as well. Just what you'd expect from a mesh coil. I love the matching drip tip that I showed you down low. We're going to give it a pro for that. And hey, man. It's firmware upgradable. That's always a pro on this channel. So let's talk about this one inside is, is it a Geek Vape Aegis killer? I'm not talking about the Legend. I'm talking about the OG one that took the 26650 batteries. And yeah, this one's an Aegis killer. Now to be fair, that mod is definitely on the old side. It's long in the tooth, that's for sure. And the fact that it takes 26650 batteries and that they've kind of fallen out of favor definitely doesn't help it in this competition. But the Jackaroo is definitely better in every way. I like the chipset better, I like the form factor better, and I like the color selection better. Overall, I gotta say, man, I absolutely love this kit. It is definitely Deuces Jack approved. You guys know I don't say this a lot, and I don't do it a lot either, this is one of those mods where I'm actually going to go out and buy myself another one. That green one caught my eye in the G10. I just love it. I'm not crazy about the resin panels. I think they look kind of cheap. I haven't seen one up close yet, but I saw the pictures, and I definitely like the G10 panels a lot better. Vandy Vape, if you're smart, you're going to make this same exact mod in dual 21700 form factor. Trust me, man. Center that 510, and it'll sell like hotcakes. Make sure you click the thumbnails on the screen. Check out some of our other videos. And that's it, folks. That's all we got today. You keep living that vape life. We're out of here. Deuces.